Yeah Ma, I'm Jack, this is Newsbreak, and here's what's coming up. A massive volcanic eruption in the Canary Islands. The Emmys are handed out in LA. And a terrifying tightrope walk from the Eiffel Tower. But before that, you know what I'm gonna ask you to do, so I'm not gonna say it, just, you know. Victoria's Premier has announced the state's roadmap out of COVID lockdown. New South Wales and the ACT also have a plan to get things back to normal-ish eventually. Here's Kale. Navigating novel situations can get a little tricky when you don't have a map. Sorry, I'm not quite sure where to turn. Ugh, silly thing. Ugh. It's why the Victorian government has just released their roadmap out of lockdown. It'll be done in a staggered and measured and proportionate, a cautious way. But we are opening up, be in no doubt about that. It all starts with you guys. By October 21st, some year 11s and all year 12s, prep, grade one and two students should be back at school. Then, once 70% of Victorians over 16 are fully vaxxed, lockdown will ease, there will be no curfew and all of you guys will be back in the classroom. Finally, with 80% of people fully vaccinated, life can get back to a COVID normal. Victorians can move around, visit homes and go shopping. New South Wales and the ACT have released their own, slightly different roadmaps to freedom, but they all rely on one thing. If you're not vaccinated, you will not have the freedom or the freedoms that vaccinated people have, even when we get to 80% double dose. And for all of us, freedom will depend on meeting those vaccination targets. Of course, not everyone's happy with the plan. And a lot of us are still facing a few more weeks in lockdown. But many are happy to finally see a way out ahead. There's been a big volcanic eruption on the Spanish Canary Island of La Palma. The Cumbra Vieja volcano started spewing out smoke on Sunday afternoon and sending rivers of lava towards nearby villages. By then, thousands of people were already being evacuated. There'd been lots of earthquakes in the area in the past week, so authorities knew the eruption was coming. Port Adelaide's Ollie Wines has won this year's Brownlow medal at a ceremony in Perth. It's the first time a Port Power player has taken out the AFL's most prestigious award. Wines polled 36 votes, equaling a record set in 2017 after averaging 32 disposals this season. Speaking of fancy awards, the 73rd Emmys have been handed out in LA. They're basically the Oscars for television and recognize the best actors and shows that have entertained us for the past year. Our resident Hollywood reporter Joe checked it out. Yeah, we entertainment reporters haven't had much of a chance to get out and about since COVID. But today, it's award time. So, we'll start with... Hey, um, they've already done the show with, like, proper presenters and stuff. Olivia Colman, The Crown. Netflix drama series The Crown was king, or uh, queen of the night, taking out all these awards. The stuff of which fairy tales are made. Other big winners include the best comedy series, Ted Lasso, and the best limited series, The Queen's Gambit. The only winner from our part of the world was New Zealand Australian Jessica Hobbs, who was one of the directors of The Crown. But the real winners were these people, who got to go to a real life, actual, non zoomed awards ceremony. Unlike me. This next segment has something for everyone. Light ropes, violins, rubber ducks, whatever floats your boat. Believe it or not, this guy is not walking on air. He's walking on a tightrope. The French daredevil, Nathan Paulin, walked 600 metres on a tightrope between the Eiffel Tower and Trocadero Square. Now, this has to be the most Italian thing I've ever seen. A string quartet performing works by famous Italian composer Vivaldi floating down Venice's famous canals on a giant violin. The uh, boat is meant to symbolise the rebirth of Venice after it was struck badly by COVID-19. 
I know what you're thinking, and no, a truck containing rubber ducks didn't crash into a river. This is the annual rubber duck race held along the Stour River in Canterbury, England, where 4,000 yellow rubber ducks float um, competitively down the river, all in the name of charity. And now it's time for me to float on out of here.